You're watching Ujamaa, where we discuss how black and brown entrepreneurs leave a positive impact on their communities by becoming great leaders. I'm your host, Michael Dorsonville. Are you feeling down? You are? Great. Wait, that came out wrong. But in today's episode, we'll be discussing the topic of self-empowerment and how it can affect oneself and help solve the world's problems. When people don't feel empowered or own self-worth, they are extremely susceptible to depression. There may be people that you are close to or that may be in your community that suffer from depression, anxiety, or other mental illnesses. In fact, over 8% of adolescents in the United States suffer from depression at any given time. Today, we are fortunate enough to speak with Ms. Shante J. Edwards, a member of the Global Shapers community and founder and chief operating officer of I Am Dope Incorporated, not to mention a natural born motivator. with such a powerful meaning. Let's try something. I want you to find someone near you and I want you to say, you are enough. Go ahead. Okay, great, give them a high five. Now, find someone else and tell them you are enough. Great, give them a high five. Okay, I'm loving it. Now, I want you to close your eyes and place your right hand over your heart and say, I am enough. Of course you are. Now, I want you to point to me and say, you are enough. <laughs> oh, I thank you. Today we have our guest, Shante, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Um, we're just going to ask you a few questions about just to get to know you, get to know you a little bit better. Uh, first question I have is, what is I Am Dope and how did that come about? So I Am Dope stands for I Am Dreaming of Possibilities Every Day. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a self-empowerment company that focuses on turning, like tuning into your narrative and you standing into your power. So standing in your truth okay. and owning your power. Also, I understand you're part of the Global Shapers community. Can you tell us a little bit more about what it is and what it means to you? Of course. So Global Shapers is an initiative of the World Economic Forum. Okay. What's really, really dope about Global Shapers, and I've been a Global Shaper for about five years. Okay. Um, I started in D.C. when I lived in D.C. and I transferred over here to New York. And currently I serve as the vice curator, which is like a VP of mm -hmm. a, like a community. And just imagine a community of dope individuals looking to make a change locally mm -hmm. to support a global impact in making a difference. Okay. How was the, the process about for this? Like, how did you get started within, like, how did you get started in the Global Shapers? That's a really good question. Mm -hmm. So, it, again, kicked off back in D.C. Mm -hmm. uh, someone saw something in me mm -hmm. and thought that this would be a dope community to be a part of. Um, I applied, I got accepted, mm -hmm. and I stayed connected with that. And then when I moved to New York from D.C., I uh, also transferred over to the New York City hub. And since then, um, it has exposed me to, again, a lot of dope individuals who were well, impact. We're talking about climate change. We're talking mm -hmm. about education. We're talking about just the future of the world as mm -hmm. it relates on a global scale, but uh -huh. really focusing locally. Oh, so is, it is a, there's someone somewhere based in New York? It is. So it's, it's based in New York as far as having a hub. Mm -hmm. However, there are hubs all throughout the world, so nationwide and globally. Mm -hmm. um, and we get to do certain w things with the focus of a local impact. Since you're all about being confident and understanding your own potential, uh, what are some competitive activities that you like to take part in? 
That's a good question. So, yeah. <laughs> confidence is um, is like the new sexy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when I think about confidence and competition, mm -hmm. I'm really not a competitive person, like mm -hmm. low key. Although, <laughs> you know what? Let me not. Scrabble. <laughs> Play Scrabble? me in some Scrabble, Scrabble, it's going down. I will scrape your Scrabble. Listen, yeah. the way my words are set up. Word? Yeah. Look, you see what? Word? 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 You, you right. got it. But I can ask Smith. But um, <laughs> so, yeah, so when I think about like hobbies and competition, I'm really, I'm really the cheerleader. Like, mm -hmm. I'm legit the person that's going to be yelling and screaming. I'm your hype girl coming through <laughs> all day, every day. Oh, so you're like the moral support. Yeah. I'm out here. And I'll, <laughs> come, I'll come at somebody who's trying to come against me, too. So, yeah. <laughs> What's, do you have any type of mentor or motivator that you can fight in? Or are you the type of person to like sort of work things out on your own? I used to exist in a space of I could do it by myself. Mm -hmm. It wasn't true. Didn't work. Uh, when I think about that, I, when I think about like mentorship and motivation, the first person that comes to mind is my mom, Marlene Edwards. And the reason why is because, you know, of course, since birth, she was there all day, every day. However, it wasn't until she passed away back mm -hmm. in 2013 that I really, really realized how powerful her presence had been and has been okay. since, you know, her passing. And the reason why I say her um, to kind of like keep pushing forth and not giving up is because um, she was she's she's my example of someone who dealt with a lot of challenges, mm -hmm. a lot of frustrations and had a lot of moments where she could have said no. And she always said yes. And so that in itself has always been the push for me. So when mm -hmm. you see me, you see her kind of situation. Yeah. And if I ever feel like, oh, I don't want to do this, I want to give up, it's okay for me to feel that way. Mm -hmm. Yet I'm always taken back to my mom and like, yo, she was out here mm -hmm. winning and making sure that everything that I do represents her. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're sort of like a, like a reflection of her? Do you want to call yourself that? I will say that, yeah, yeah. So I'm the oldest of seven, um, mm -hmm. and I wear that proudly, like, yo, I'm out here. Um, my mom was a woman who um, who was committed to people and education. Mm -hmm. She was committed to living. And the thing about my mom was that she was diagnosed uh, back in, like, 99 with uh, breast cancer. Mm -hmm. and, the, and her story connected to that is that no one really knew that. You know, mm -hmm. it's like having a human go through a lot of different things that could definitely take you and knock you out and, and, you know, put you in a moment of being depressed. But then when she looked in the mirror, she knew that she had seven children to raise over time. Yeah. And so my mom um, and me being a reflection of her is really my commitment to showing people, yo, you got to be out here, like mm -hmm. really making magic happen. And a way to do that is really just being yourself. And my mom was always herself. And that played a big role into you being the confident person you are today, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, so you had mentioned the World Economics Forum. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you get into this? And was the vibe similar to Global Shapers? So the thing about the World Economic Forum is that it is actually an initiative. Uh, it's connected as far as like a sponsorship of Global Shapers. Mm -hmm. So Global Shapers is connected to the World Economic Forum through um, it serving as like a support system. Okay. Um, so Global Shapers is more of a, a baby of the World mm -hmm. Economic Forum, and through Global Shapers is where we get to do projects to impact places, in, oh. to impact our community on a okay. local level. So Global Shapers is more of the it brings the ideas, and the World Economics Forum is it actually does it. Not necessarily. So think about World Economic Forum is like it's it's on its it's itself. Global mm -hmm. Shapers as an initiative is more of a project from the World Economic Forum. So oh, the World okay, Economic okay. Forum saw that, you know, there was a space needed for uh, young people between the ages and between their 20s and mm -hmm. up to 35 to make a difference and wanted to create a community for that. And that's where Global Shapers came about. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. um, so you had to talk about Scrabble. You was talking all that crap. Uh, yeah, but it's not Scrabble, it's facts. No, mm -hmm. mm -mm. What are, do you have any passions or hobbies outside of the workplace that keep you from like going insane? That's a good question. So he, here's what's really cool. When I think about passions, I think about hobbies, they, mm -hmm. all, they all are the same to me. Mm -hmm. uh, how I exist in the world, because I am my own boss, I get to move and groove and do what I want to do. So passions outside of the workplace that, don't, that doesn't have to, um, that, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. passions outside of the workplace that are separate from motivating people mm -hmm. and getting people hype, Netflix and chill. 
That's X and chill. Yeah, and that's, that's it. Chill. That's it. That's all I got. Uh, for you. No, yeah. like basketball. Or I nothing? mean, the basketball situation. I'm a ref, so mm-hmm. I do serve as a ref. Call me Miss Ref on okay. the court. Uh, and reading. Mm-hmm. I'm a learner. I love and enjoy reading. So okay. yeah. Oh, so, and then I, I do a podcast. So podcast? enjoy like doing the podcast. So that's a hobby of mine. I enjoy. What's the name of the podcast? Is it like just something you do for fun, or is it? Uh, so it, the name of the podcast is mm-hmm. the Dope Mindset mm-hmm. Podcast. You can find it on SoundCloud okay. right now. Uh, and it's it's fun, but it's also my space to support my passion for inspiring people. Okay, let's take this to the streets and see how others feel about self empowerment. Hey, what's good? My name is Vianne, and welcome to YouTube, where we hit the streets of East Harlem in search of people that relate to stuff that makes them say, "Wait, YouTube." Today we're looking for how people practice self-empowerment and up their confidence. So let's get it. So um, today's question of the day is what in your daily life makes you feel empowered? Being a woman. Um, Being a black woman, um, I'm a security supervisor of six security supervisors underneath me. So I think that kind of gives me empowerment. You know, but just being... um, Hey, what makes you feel empowered, man? You know, the money, education, like family, everything, you know? All that all that good stuff. Yeah, all that good stuff. So what about family makes you feel empowered? Like you know you gotta do what you gotta do so you can make sure your family's okay at the end of the day. That's true. And education's important because education is important because it opens up the door for you for a lot of opportunities. Um what makes me feel empowered is my family. Um, we just give each other the best advice, uh, especially through hardships. Um, we motivate each other. Because of them, I know what it means like to be a family with people, and I kind of look for that in a lot of ways. What makes you feel empowered? What makes me feel empowered is that my mom, she always gives me breakfast and takes me to school. And because moms always have to be important, and that's why they don't die. The father dies first. Well, today's question is, what makes you feel empowered? Um, I guess seeing my pet, which only has three legs and she's still going. Um, she's still does everything like a normal dog, runs like a normal dog, does everything like a normal dog. Kind of gives me a little bit of strength. Do you have anything else that makes you feel empowered? Like family or like, you know, a certain object at home that makes you like want to get up and get things done? I think video games. Video games, since they're so difficult, but you still could do them, why not put the same thing in real life? Thank you for watching you too. Hope you enjoy. And now back to Mike in the studio. Welcome back. And if you're just now tuning in, we're here with Ms. Shante J. Edwards, founder of I Am Dope, a global shaper, and an overall amazing person. So Shante, um, what impact do you hope to have on society in the next five years, as well as the next 25 years? You know, I'm on my Oprah level mm-hmm. right now. So <laughs> <laughs> when you ask that question, my impact Instead of hope, I know Mm -hmm. that I'm going to leave people better than I found them. And essentially, the idea of the truth of you matter. Mm -hmm. So anytime you always, yes, because you you are. And that's it. That's no, like seriously. And Mm -hmm. and that's literally that feeling and that kind of that that moment of of being in the space of knowing that you Mm -hmm. are necessary. And that's the impact. That you're necessary, that you matter, and you're, yeah, you're magical. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Yes. I'm about to cry now. <laughs> um, you were talking about growing up in Chicago earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, how did growing up in Chicago impact your confidence? Because I know Chicago is a rough and tough town. So. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. my, it's funny. Mm-hmm. When I was growing up, so for me, it was a bit of a different struggle, right? Mm-hmm. So I grew up as the oldest of seven yeah. um i got bullied ah mm-hmm. uh, man from like being in grammar school to being in high school and it did a lot it did a number on my confidence mm-hmm. and fortunately my mom was who she was that it didn't tear me down because mm-hmm. there was something about growing up in chicago in the household that i grew up in with my mother 
that allowed me to continue to push forward. Because there were moments where I was like really sad. Yeah. Um, there were moments where I didn't like want to live anymore. Mm -hmm. And it was just like going through this motion of not feeling like I was enough, not feeling like I mattered because people would talk about me, people would pick on me. Mm -hmm. uh, though Chicago currently in the state, you know, people talk about how rough it is. And the reality is that my, my city mm -hmm. is in need of more opportunity and good shine than that spotlight that it's getting on like yeah. the negativity. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about what Chicago has done for my confidence now is that, yo, that's my city. Mm -hmm. And in being from the West side and being from where I come from, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a product of an environment that I wasn't supposed to be here. Yeah. Like I wasn't supposed to make it. Like I even mm -hmm. have people tell me all the time, like, you know, Shantae, if people knew your story, they wouldn't they think that you were supposed to be where you are now. Mm -hmm. That connects to my confidence because it allows me to know that, yo, I got a story to push. Yeah. I got some I got some moves to make because mm -hmm. there's more to do in this world. Yeah. Um, and on a side note, too, growing up where I grew up, my curiosity was a big piece, too. Mm -hmm. So curiosity and confidence allows for this like experience of an explosion. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? Well, because I was curious, I got to be exposed to different things. So I wasn't doing the normal things that some of my peers were doing. I was doing a little bit more on the kind of like upgraded level. Mm -hmm. And that exposure led me to want, want more, mm -hmm. like desire more. And in order for me to get into rooms, I had to step my game up. So yeah. I had to show up with the handshake. I had mm -hmm. to show up looking a different and type learn, of way. Right? I to, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that supported like me when I come into a room, you know, I'm there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, to all the people that doubted you, look at you now, right? Hey, <laughs> out here. <laughs> um, I've noticed that in a bunch of your speeches, you use the example of hidden money in a container. You then ask the crowd, will somebody take the bag, while not revealing what's, that there's money enclosed in it. Can you tell us a little bit about what this metaphor means? That's dope. So that's that mm -hmm. idea of like, what you see is not always what you think you're going to get. Mm -hmm. And it's connected to, are you really that hungry? Mm -hmm. Are you, you really want this, right? I mean, if also, there's, if there's money right, in the bag, I think I'll if you're it. But if you don't know though, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You know, because people are normally, you know, it's good for something to look good. If mm -hmm. it look good, they're like, I, I'm going to come for it. Yeah. If it doesn't, they're like, ah, I'm going to push that to the side. Mm -hmm. But it's really around how bad do you want it? Are you going to take a risk? Yeah. Are you going to take a chance to either be embarrassed or get excited? Mm -hmm. And normally, if you see a black plastic bag and somebody like, yo, take this, yeah. people are like, Nah, bro, I'm good, <laughs> you know? And so that particular piece, um, a part of my speeches, has a lot to do with, are you going to take the risk? Because mm -hmm. if I'm going to tell you about taking risks, you have to understand that in order to take a risk, you got to take a chance. Yeah, that's the only way, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it is, yeah. So that's what that is connected to. Okay. Now that you've explained that metaphor, and before you say any more, I'm going to ask you to hold up, because I hear a historical fact knocking at the door. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Ujama Fact of the Day. I'm Ezekiel Mejia, and today we'll be talking to you about self-empowerment during the Black Panther movement. Born in New York City on July 16, 1947, as Joanna Debra O'Brien, controversial revolutionary Ashanta Shakur leaves a legacy of activism and misunderstanding, but above all else, demonstrates that self-empowerment will always exist within you, even when you are fighting against a lot. As a student, Shakur chose to put herself in whatever situation she felt she could make change to, whether it be incidents, rent strikes, and anti-war demonstrations. When Shakur joined the infamous Black Panther Party, other members of the organization familiarized her with black historical figures that resisted racial oppression and social violence. Besides participating in party demonstrations and rallies, she became responsible for the party's free breakfast program. Based in Harlem, the program became responsible for community children, oversight clinics, and coordinated health care, outreach, and aid. It was well known at the time, the tension between the Black Panthers and the other such activist group with FBI. However, she also began interacting with other activist groups and participated in student rallies and the Black Liberation Movement. In 1971, she left the Black Panther Party and joined the Black Liberation Army. During this time, she was then tried for the first degree murder of state trooper Warner Forrester. It's important to keep in mind that during this time, the FBI placed the Black Panther Party, the Black Liberation Army, and other such groups as prime targets and were set to see them as criminals. She later fled to Cuba in 1984. However, to this day, Shakur has remained in Cuba 
with the FBI classifying her as domestic terrorist and placing her on the most wanted list as of May 2nd, 2013, with a $1 million reward, making her the first woman ever to be listed. Whether or not you believe Shakur was violent, there's no denying her legacy of self-empowerment for herself and for her people. Well, ladies and gentlemen, looks like our time is up. Thank you for joining us today on Ujama's Fact of the Day. Um, what makes I Am Dope different or special compared to other, other companies you've worked with? You know, I Am Dope is me, right? Mm -hmm. So it's this idea, but it's also a movement. Mm -hmm. And not necessarily different from other companies because everybody has their own story. So every company has their own story. Every company shows up the way they're going to show up. I Am Dope, you're going to always, always, I guarantee you, not only be ignited and be mm -hmm. set on fire, but when you experience I Am Dope, you're gonna always remember it too. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like, when I think of, when you think about I Am Dope, you start using dope even more. You're like, yeah. yo, that's dope. that's dope. And they're like, wait, oh yeah, I am and dope. And it reminds you of, yeah. Exactly. Um, so do the business side of things ever get overwhelming or make you want to give up? And what do you do to sort of pick yourself up? That's a good question because it's always, you know, you talked about comparison to other companies mm -hmm. and thinking about opportunities for I Am Dope to grow. Mm -hmm. It can, it has gotten overwhelming and mm -hmm. it's more around thinking trajectory, right? Mm -hmm. Talking about the business aspect and thinking numbers, right? Yeah. So when I, when I come through with I Am Dope, me having my MBA, a lot of what I do focuses on what are the numbers? What am I projecting? Oh, I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah. I'm doing this solo dolo. Where am I going? Mm -hmm. And what keeps me grounded is knowing that aside from the money and aside from the future of like the revenue, mm -hmm. there's a message, yeah. there's an opportunity, and it allows me to be still. So the, the, the thought of the I am dope, it just, it keeps you propelling forward? It does, and then the messages mm -hmm. for folks too. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the, gratitude goes a long way mm -hmm. and I am fortunate and blessed to be able to receive gratitude from people every day that I didn't even expect like somebody will like write something on my Facebook mm -hmm. post and like hey Shante thank you I needed that slide in my DM <laughs> like you know and it's like I'm okay yeah. uh, you, you feel yourself right, right? yeah, well, <laughs> well, <laughs> <hold up>. yeah. <laughs> um so what do you say to the people who disagree with your message? The ones that say just like, man up and do it yourself. Like, what do you say to those type of people? That's okay. I operate in the, everyone has their own opinion. Okay. Everyone has their own message mm -hmm. and that's okay. However, I also support in a conversation. Mm -hmm. So the conversation and the question I would ask would be why? why should we just man up? Mm -hmm. Because I do believe there's a process to finding and exploring versus just getting over it. Mm -hmm. You know, there is the emotional and the mental piece that connect to you finally understanding that it's not just about manning up mm -hmm. or womaning up or just upping up. It's about really understanding yourself and mm -hmm. reflecting. So my question to them would be, why? Mm -hmm. And then how, how do you do that? Yeah. So let me take it a step further and okay. ask, what would you say to the people who bring negativity? So they'll neg like look at somebody mm -hmm. negatively. Yeah. Because I experienced that before in like growing up, I'm a, you know, people are always going to have their own opinion. The conversation is really like, are you mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. It's like, I, and, and I've, I've gone through so many different layers of negativity that when I think about it from a perspective that someone's quote unquote hating mm -hmm. because something's not right. Yeah. So it's like, you want a friend, you need a hug, you need a <laughs> high five, you know, mm -hmm. you want some attention. Um, <laughs> and that allows for you to see, to, for me to be able to see them as human. Because mm -hmm. people go through things often that allow for this negativity or some type of misery. And I talk mm -hmm. about misery loves company. And it's like, how do you stay afloat, right? Mm -hmm. People up here hating, got negative comments, got negative energy, but it's really, how do you approach that? Yeah. Well, that's Shantae, everybody. Thank you for being here. We really appreciate you. We have a lot of insight now on just being confident, and you made me feel special, so we really appreciate you. Thank you. You're welcome, and remember, you matter. I matter? You do. How much? Always. Like on a scale from one to ten? Always. Always? Always. Always. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us in Ujamaa.
where we try our best to educate and inspire our viewers. Don't forget to follow us at The Youth Channel on YouTube and Instagram. And since today's episode was all about positivity and all the good that comes from it, let's end this episode with a positive message. Shante, would you please do the honors? Let me tell you something. There is no one alive who is younger than you. You are amazing, you are fantastic, and you are necessary. Understand something else. People will doubt you, but they are afraid. They are afraid of their own dreams, they are afraid of only believing in themselves, and they see the magic that you possess. So let me tell you something. When you look in the mirror, see your beauty. See that you are necessarily what's up. And also know something else. Again, there is no one alive who is youer than you. You matter. You are amazing. You are so dope. And you are yes. So look, keep pushing, keep going, keep believing, because you got this, okay? Yeah. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. <laughs> You heard about Bigfoot? Yeah, everybody knows about Bigfoot. I know some cryptids you don't know. Sure, try me. You know Kappa? Yep. Nessie? Yep. Mono Pod? Mono what? Ah, got him. We're back with your favorite show. That's right, it's the YC Weekly. Last week we claimed we were going into the occult, but this week we really mean it. Ever heard of Bigfoot? That's right, we're talking about cryptids. Ah, cryptids. If you haven't seen them with your own eyes, you've definitely heard stories about them. But instead of going into details about Nessie, here are some cryptids you might not have heard about. In West Virginia, several reports have claimed to see a bipedal humanoid with wings in the sleepy town of Point Pleasant. Despite Mothman's renowned title, witnesses have claimed that he in no way looks like a moth. Huh. The winged cryptid was reported to be about 7 feet tall with a wingspan of 10 to 15 feet and able to fly over 100 miles per hour. That's impressive. Sorry, how would they be able to measure how fast he can fly? Uh, yeah, I have no idea. Named after the state where it was first sighted, the devil was spotted in a region of New Jersey called the Pine Barrens. These sightings stretch back to the 17th century. Dang. Story goes that in a clan full of misfits and layabouts, one woman got pregnant for the 13th time. She cursed the child in her frustration, and surprisingly enough, the child was born completely normal. Until it sprouted wings, grew hooves, and a snout, and killed everything in its path. Talk about tough love. On the other side of the globe, accounts have been found of a humanoid roughly the size of a child with scaly skin in Japanese folklore. Kappas, a conglomerate of the words Kawa meaning river and Wapa meaning child, are said to inhabit ponds and rivers throughout Japan. They're kind of like frog people, kinda. They're usually recognized by their beak, shell, and a flat hairless region on the top of their head regarded as the source of their power. Their behavior ranges from some relatively innocent pranks to some pretty questionable acts that we won't be going into. I will say though, if you're planning on going swimming to Japan anytime soon, make sure to bring your floaties. Well, that's all for this week. Even though we're not even close to Halloween, we thought these creatures were definitely worth sharing. Make sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, make sure to stay far away from the woods. You never know what you might find in there.